up party people and welcome back to my channel so i'm super excited for today's video because today we're testing out a hair tool so this is the ion lux four in one air styler this is from sally's beauty supply this is supposed to be a dupe for the dyson air wrap you know the expensive five or six hundred dollar blow dryer hair curler like i i no way that is a lot of bills put into one hair tool okay so yeah apparently you can use this as a blow dryer and also a hair curler you know how like the dyson like it like sucks your hair up and then it, it automatically twists it like it's supposed to do that kind of thing and then i'm also going to wear it throughout the day and see how it wears like if my curls actually hold up because that's a problem with blow drying your hair into curls it doesn't last so yeah let's get into it here's what it looks like when you open it up so you have four different attachments so that's why it's called a four in one so you get a concentrated diffuser you get a normal diffuser so this is good for people with curly hair and then you get two curling iron detachments so each one goes a different direction so this is the one that's supposed to like suck your hair up and just go you know just kind of like but each of these curling barrels are one inch. I gotta say, they're really trying to give you the experience of the Dyson. Like this box is very heavy duty, like very expensive feeling. Now, obviously this isn't affordable. This is $140 at Sally's, but it's affordable compared to the Dyson's. But I will say I found a 15% off coupon somewhere. Like something that popped up on the Sally's app or the Sally's website or something. Instead, if you signed up for like text notifications or something like that, you get a 15% off coupon. So I used that. So that brought my total down to 108. And then with tax, it was 114. Yeah, here's what the device looks like. So yeah, underneath here you have a little attachment release button. So let's see how they snap on and see if they're secure. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not coming off. So let's just press this little button. And yeah, comes off really easily. And then down here you have a cool shot and auto wrap curl. You've got an LED indicator. So I guess we'll see that <laughs> once we plug it in. You've got three heat settings, low, medium, and high right here. And then two airflow settings. So like low and high. It says extra long nine foot cord. Ooh, this is a not, yeah. This is a good long cord. I like that. Yeah, here's what my hair looks like down. I washed it yesterday morning. All I did yesterday was put in my leave-ins. One thing I do want to say though, is that if you're going to blow dry your hair, like wait until it's like, like 70, like at least 70 to 80% dry, just because it's just, it's so hard on your hair when it's completely wet. And especially like to do, you know, a curling technique like this. I'm trying to get mine pretty wet though, just cause I want to see how fast it actually blow dries, like from start to finish. You know what, let's go ahead and get up here at my roots just to see if I can like, I don't know, redo the volume cause I've got none. I'm gonna go into my Amica Supernova Moisture and Shine Cream. I love this stuff so much. I don't think this is supposed to be a heat protectant. It might be. But we're, we're gonna use the heat protectant anyway. I'm gonna lift my hair up in sections. I'm gonna spray the underneath part <coughs> in the top and then brush it through. So yeah, I'm gonna start off with the concentrated diffuser first. The buttons are very stiff. Oh my God. Ah, I can't turn it off. It's so stiff. I have to use two hands just to turn it off. All right, 1250. So let's see how long it takes me. Also, ladies, please turn your heat down. It does not need to be so hot that it burns your skin, okay? So it is now 12.53, so it took three minutes to blow dry my hair. That's crazy. My hair does feel very smooth. I wouldn't say it feels like super different than what it does when I use a normal blow dryer, but like it feels really good. It feels really soft. I will say something that was annoying me was that the cool button, like the cool and curl button, it's right there where you're holding it. And like I kept getting cool air shots on it. So like I could tell when my finger was hitting it. So yeah, this button's pretty easy to smash down while you're blow drying it. Okay, so let's see which one. Okay, so this one's going to the right. So this is my right side. This is my left side. So let's do the curl. How do I, how do I hold it? One o'clock, let's go. You gotta press this button. There we go, okay. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, boy. And then how do you let it out? How, how, let, let it go. Let it go. Okay. There's a learning curve. This is too hot. Got it on the lowest setting for heat. Let's turn the airflow down. Can we? Oh, my God. I'm having a really hard time with these buttons. There we go. We're sucking it up. That's good. It's actually sucking. And then how do you let it go like that? Oh, it's, uh, it's sucking up the other piece. Ah, I didn't want that. Oh, it's very hot. Can I do it this way underneath? Ow, it's hot. Oh my God, 
god, this button is so touchy. Okay, so um, the curl is definitely very, very pretty, but a uh, couple things. If you try to take a section that's any bigger than like one inch, which is the size of the barrel, it won't pick it up. It just wants to like get all gommy and stuff. I'm having a hard time trying to figure out like how to release it. Like if you're supposed to hit the button. I'm, on the other side, I may try like touching the button to turn it off because it seems like this button right here, the, uh, the cool curl button, is the one that turns it on and off. So see, it's red, it's hot. It goes cool and then it turns off. Wait, what? Off on the right side. So on this side, I'm gonna try actually turning it off in between each section that I curl, just so like when I pull it out, it doesn't keep sucking my hair up and it doesn't make it as like, you know, fuzzy and like weird. Okay, I'm gonna do what you would probably do at home if you were encountering this situation. I'm just gonna go ahead and watch some videos and see what everyone else is doing. Okay, so there's not a lot of videos on YouTube or anything of people using this. One girl I just watched just kind of like shook it out. So we're gonna try that. Okay, 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 the shaking out thing worked. Okay, okay. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm like sweat. I'm having hot flashes right now. But we're gonna go to the top now and I may go ahead and do like a mohawk section too. Just, I don't know. Cause it seems like you, you have to do one inch sections. Going back to this side, I'm gonna speed this up. All right, my arm hurts. It's hot. Like my skin right now, like I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not doing this just for like shock factor, like just to make an interesting video. Like this is actually kind of making me sick cause of all the heat. Also something that's weird about it is that it doesn't tell you how long to leave it in for. Am I leaving it in too long? Not long enough? Like I just, there's no instructions in this thing. Maybe there is, like, maybe I need to get out some paperwork. I will say, oh, it does come with a little like fingertip protector thing. Oh, that's in the very bottom, missed it. Wait a minute, which one? Wait, what? What is this gonna do? Which hand do I put it on? I don't know. Okay, so it says when installed with the barrel attachments and working as a curler, the air temperature settings are constant around 250 degrees and not adjustable. <gasps> Oh. Yeah, it says twice over here. It says when installed with the barrel attachment and working as a curler, the switch only works as a power on off switch and the air speed is constant and non-adjustable. Okay, so that makes sense. So yeah, I was wondering like why when I was moving the airflow button around, like it wasn't really changing anything. So it's on, so I'm gonna try to change the airflow. Yeah, it's, it's non-changing. 250, that seems a lot harder than 250. This seems like 375, 400 degrees, like just based on my experience. Move the styling tool and style your hair for three to five seconds. Three to five seconds, that's what I needed to know. Yeah, probably should have read that in the beginning. Okay, moving back to this side, I feel like I've cooled off a little bit now, so <laughs> let's try this again. Hopefully I'm getting better at it. All right, so there's the middle section. So I, I'm, I'm still really impressed with the amount of like body and volume my hair has. And like, it's, like, it's just very blowout s. Look at this, like my hair usually doesn't look this good. Like this is, this is really pretty. So now let's go to the top. Let's do the left side attachment. Oh my God, my scalp is so blood red. I will say though, if you're a girly that likes to use Velcro rollers, then this makes it super easy. Like whenever you release the curl, it maintains its shape. So all you have to do is just like slide a roller in there and then clip it down. So I wanna go ahead and do the style out process and like with products and hairspray and stuff, just because I feel like if I sit here too long, it has a chance to fall and lose that volume and body. So I'm gonna go into my Bio Silk Serum and just kind of run this to my ends. So now I'm gonna go into some hairspray. So I'm just gonna use the Ion Flexible Finishing Spray. Um, this video isn't sponsored by Ion, by the way. This is just the one I've been enjoying lately because it's a nice like light to medium hold and it doesn't weigh my hair down. I do wanna go ahead and give you the time before I move on. So it's 1.57 right now. So yeah, here's what my hair looks like with styling products and just kind of flipped around a little bit. So I didn't do any teasing. So that we're just gonna go with the volume that it naturally gives. And as you can see, like I normally don't have this much volume up here. Let me show you the back. The back probably looks like crap, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna hope for the best. So hopefully I don't have like this big split in the back of my head. Um, but whatever, the front looks good. Now I will say this may work better on like damp hair, like 80 to 90% dry hair. I'm already seeing that my curls kind of falling straight. Like I don't have as much bend to my ends, especially around my face as I did initially. So yeah, so far, even though I have my qualms with it, with it being too hot, with it being kind of hard to be precise with the sectioning, I really like the effect that it gives. And we'll see how it wears. Hopefully this actually holds up. So 
Wish me luck. Okay, we're back for our first and final check-in of today's wear test. I say that for a reason. So it's about to be eight o'clock. So we literally just hit, what, the six hour mark. So this is what my hair looks like after uh, a not super long day. And it started looking like this around like, I don't know, two or three hours ago. So yeah, as I predicted, unfortunately blowouts do not last on my hair type and texture. As you can see, I did lose a lot of volume. It's like flat to my head now, which sucks. Apparently I'm just not meant to have body or volume or anything. It's just not for me apparently. So yeah, I definitely don't look as smooth. Uh, I look very like kind of like, like frizzy and all messed up right through here. Like, I look like a cat. I look like a cat that hasn't groomed himself. So what I want to try next is doing this on damp hair, but also applying a mousse to my hair when it's dry. Lately, I've seen a lot of people say that a good tip is to apply mousse to your hair dry, which you would never think about doing because you would think it'd make your hair sticky, but that's supposed to lock onto your style a lot better. And there are people that I've seen that have said that they've gone days with their curl and it, it still looks as good. So we're going to try that. I'll see you guys then. Alrighty guys, we are back for round two. So this side is gonna be my damp hair side. I did take a shower a couple of hours ago, so my hair is freshly clean. This is day one hair. And on this side, this is mostly dry. It's slightly damp, I would say it's like 9% dry, but I've applied a mousse to it. However, both sides have been heat protected. They've had an oil put in and a moisture leave-in cream. So that's the only similarities. I'm gonna go ahead and do my entire left side first, since this is the damp side. I'm trying to avoid it getting dry on me. And hopefully you guys see some improvement in my technique because I have been testing it here and there. Also, I've learned that while you're curling, like when it's actually on, if you press the cool curl button right here at the very top, the one that's blinking, uh, it actually shuts it off. So you don't have to worry about it just continuously sucking up hair and blowing heat all over and just damaging stuff. So yeah, glad I learned that one. Yeah, it's 523 right now. So we're going to see how long it takes us. There's the bottom section. So yeah, I think I've definitely improved. Yeah, moving on up. Moving on up to the east side. The deluxe apartment in the sky. See, look, one press of the button and it releases that. Wish I'd known that the other day before I just burned my head to death. Look at that clean section, nice and clean. You just kind of shake it out. Let it cool in your hand for a couple of seconds. Alrighty, last one, let's do it. So I'm not doing the Mohawk section like I did before. I don't really know why, I'm just not. I'm trying to over direct it to the opposite direction as much as possible to try to get more volume and bounce. But you could so easily like just shake the section out and the curl stays intact. Like you could just slip in a clip or a bobby pin, let it sit there and cool off. Like you don't have to even use Velcro rollers and your curl would probably hold better and you get more volume. So moving on to the right side, the mousse, mostly dry side. Another thing I've learned is that whenever you get the section, like you do kind of want to like maneuver the section onto the rod and just, you know, just kind of help it a little bit. But you want to get to where like the ends go first and then you kind of work your way up um, or else the ends will just kind of like plop right out. Yeah, if you start at the top, see, like you got to kind of, you got to help it a little bit. And I have been holding it on there for three to five seconds, like it says to in the instructions. I also kind of like to twirl it just to kind of help define the curl a little bit. Look at that. Bounce city. Another tip is you want to keep it moving the entire time. This is just my professional opinion. This that isn't what it says to do the instructions or anything, but I recommend keeping it moving because if you leave it in one spot, like say you get it all wrapped up and you just sit there for that three to five seconds time frame, it's just constantly burning every strain in that section. So if you keep it moving a little bit, just, I don't know, it just kind of helps distribute the heat better to where it's not sitting in one place the entire time. All right, technically that's time. So 542, so it took almost exactly 20 minutes. It definitely would have taken less time had I not been stopping and starting. There's been extra time added on because of just filming purposes. Um, but here's what my hair looks like right now. So I definitely didn't get as much volume on top as I did when I first, like when I did the mohawk section last time. So I may go back in and do that because I don't I'm a little flatty McGaddy back there. And you know what? I kind of sort of want to put a clip in. Huh? Huh? So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and spray all of it so that it doesn't loosen up because we, we're trying to give it as best of a shot as possible. All right, so it's been several minutes. So let's go ahead and take these down. Whoa, that's a look. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it. I'm not going to brush it out or anything. I'm just going to go through with my fingers and just kind of 
work with it a little bit. I'm also not gonna use serum today. That's another little variable I'm gonna test because last time I did, that serum usually works out really well for me. I use it all the time. It's pretty good for my hair. But when it comes to blowout styles, serum on me, may not be the best equation. I love this look so freaking much. Body, there's volume, there's curl. It looks smooth, it's soft, it doesn't look crunchy. So it's 556, we're just gonna go ahead and say six o'clock just to make it a good even time. Alrighty guys, it's time for a final checkout. It is now 1218. Yeah, I can't do Australian very well, sorry. So yeah, six hours and I also took a nap. So here's what we look like. I can't tell a big difference from side to side. I've actually got a really good amount of curl left over. Like this is way more bounce and curl. Definitely definition and body than what I had the other day. Doing it on damp hair may be the ticket. I do want to point out though that after I got done filming, I was like, you know what? Maybe let's use a volumizing, texturizing kind of spray around my roots. Like maybe that'll help hold the volume. So I did go into the Kenra Dry Volume Burst and just lifted up certain sections around the top. Went under here, kind of sprayed it under there a little bit. I don't know if that's what helped it or maybe clipping the Mohawk section in place at the very end, maybe that helped hold the volume. But honestly, from here down, I'm not super impressed with the way it holds up. But this is why I can't do straight styles. This is why you never see my hair just straight because my hair has a tendency to get very scraggly, especially in the layer area, like where my layers fall. Frizzy, frayed, not very smooth, and just kind of like, wow. I want to show you guys because you may be saying like, why don't you just brush it? Because brushing will get rid of all my curl and make it look frizzy. So let's do it on this side, okay? So I'm going to take it and very lightly kind of, let's see if we can maintain the curl a little bit though. I just feel like whenever my hair is straight-ish, I just have to constantly be brushing. Oh, little twirl really brought that back to life. Wait a minute. Some pieces are willing to do it, some pieces aren't. So yeah, brushing it and twisting it does help to make it look smoother, but it does take away more of the definition of the curl. This is a very short-lived kind of style for me and my hair type and texture. So I'd like to see what clipping up every section does, like if that actually helps to prolong the wear of it. I just get more longevity with my hair when I curl it with an iron. I can use my Babyliss one and a half or one and a quarter inch curling iron, and it will last me through the next day. I can sleep on my style, put some serum through it, scrunch it like this, and it looks just as good as the day before. I would have to use this more than a curling iron, which is, you know, it's more damage, it's more heat. So who is this gonna be good for? Number one, if you have thick, coarse, or even curly hair, and you don't have a hard time holding a style, I think this will be fabulous for you. I feel like in general, people with thick, coarse, curly hair have an easier time doing blowouts, like it just holds up better on you. If you do like that blowout look, but you don't like to round brush on yourself, or you just can't, like me, I do think this is a really good option. If you're someone that uses a blow dryer religiously, I don't, but if you are someone that blow dries your hair all the time, then I think this would probably be a really good investment because you're saving so much time on your hair. Hairstylist, ah, oh. This would cut down your dry time on clients like 75%. That is a huge money saver. If you're someone that's been eyeballing the Dyson and you just can't rationalize spending $600 on a freaking blow dryer, check this one out first. Because here's the thing, you may like the idea of the Dyson, you may like the idea of blowouts, but I think it's a trend. Just like with every other expensive tool, makeup related, hair related, skin related, they influence you to buy it and then people stop using it. And then you've got a $600 blow dryer under your sink that you never use because you never see it in use. Who is this not gonna be good for? I think if you have fine, thin hair that is pin straight, yeah, you're probably fighting a losing battle. Or even if your hair is like thick, and super stick straight. I've known girls that have really thick straight hair. They can't get a curling iron style to last on them. Look, if you have a hard time holding any kind of curl style, I don't think this will do it for you. Also, food for thought. I think, this is just my speculation, this is just a hypothesis that I have, it's just a theory. I think that with the Dyson, where it's a new technology, it's very advanced, like they say that it's supposed to be better for your hair, it's more healthy for your hair, blah, blah, blah. I think a few years down the road, we're gonna see a lot of lawsuits, a lot of claims of people saying that they've lost hair, their hair's thinned out, they've experienced a lot of breakage. Like I think there's gonna be a lot of negative coming from the Dyson because I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they did do a lot of testing prior to releasing the product, but I think, we're probably the guinea pigs right now. And Dyson, I mean, I know they are probably a multi-million, if not multi-billion dollar company, but they're used to making vacuums and hand drying machines and bathrooms. So hair is just, just a little bit different. I'm just gonna leave you guys with that. Hopefully I've given you enough information to make an educated decision because what I find value in may not be something that you find value in and vice versa. So. It's up to you guys now. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative and helpful. Hopefully it kind of helped give you some direction and helped you make a decision. If it did, and if you want to see more videos like this where I test out hair tools, then make sure you get a big old 
thumbs up. Here's a couple more things for you to check out next. Just venture around the channel, make yourself at home. Subscribe if you're not already. Enter the notification below to always see my stuff, and I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.